MixNetRadio.com with Andrew and Lee. Talking boxing, combat, sports, comedy, football, and everything kick-ass. All on FightNetRadio.com. Fight now! Las Vegas Discount.net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. And travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. Las Vegas Discount.net. Las Vegas Discount.net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit Las Vegas Discount.net. Hola, soy Julio César Chávez. And lights out, baby. Lights out all day. This is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's a radio show. It ain't a one-hour television spectacular. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. We gonna know. I got eyes and ears everywhere. I got friends all over the world, man. Who oh, gives a shit with Whitey? He's a piece of crap. Oh, hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody on FightNetRadio.com. You are listening to Ken Norton on FightNet Radio. And I've been thinking that I would come out of retirement just to knock out Lee Hunter. Everybody, welcome to FightNet Radio. Lee Hunter and Andrew Lavache bringing you the wonderful world of boxing. And isn't it wonderful, Andrew? Yes, it is. How's it going, Lee? It's going very well. How are you today? Good, good. Drinking my coffee at 4.20 in the afternoon. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, Andrew. The cats are fighting. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get the cats. <laughs> oh, fuck. The dogs are in the house now. Hold on, Andrew. Jesus. Holy shit. One of them's got a gun, Andrew. One of the dogs has a gun. And you didn't think I'd work it in again, did you? <laughs> Does it make you smile now? Weekly? I don't. Just, just I see where it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a regular to the show, then you're not going to get that joke. But for the regulars, that's a damn fine joke. I was going to do it at the Tyson Fury press conference, but I thought I've already gone down that road once. Welcome, everybody. That's Andrew Labache. He is a writer and a, and a passionate boxing uh, fan and writer, and I am just a complete douchebag. My only function is as a court gesture to try to make you all laugh. And as uh, we we almost started to state, it's fight week. Woo! Woo! Don't you feel it? There is a vibe in the air. Heavyweight Strap champ. season. Strap oh. season. Sorry. <laughs> we have some uh, midweek. Uh, we've got some press announcements. But more importantly, Andrew, we have one fight to talk about at the top of the show. There's no reason to get away from it. It's We might as well just get it on and get it over with, as they say in the business. The bronze bomber. So uh, before I start reading the crazy ass shit he said today, and it's crazy ass shit, Andrew, like he was out of fucking control this time. Did you did you see the major announcement, Lee? You should have opened. Did you see the major I, announcement I today? I Googled Deontay just to look at his press conference quotes. What was his official announcement? That he's going to oh. kill a man? Uh, no. No, it's, man, you should really go to his page and see it. It's so big. It was huge. It was game changing. Uh, he brought out a line of T-shirts, Lee. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on, I can <laughs> they, Google that. Yeah, and they say Wilder. Ooh. <laughs> I not mean, not till this day. Oh, you know. Oh, I'm sure he's got some of those in there, but no, it's. Oh man. By the way, uh, he, what is he? How, even he, really make the news feed. <laughs> It doesn't. If you Google Deontay, well, I'll show you <laughs> the, the modern of video technology. So Deontay Wilder t-shirts, right? Nope. Nope. 
Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Oh, look, there's the offer he turned down. That will always be there. <laughs> Rejects a hundred million dollars. Yeah, it'll be on the web forever. So you can look at the hundred million he passed on to make. How much against Dilly? Uh, I'm sorry, against Dominic Brazil? What's he making? Ten, uh, we're hoping twelve. Five, yeah, we're hoping around 12. twelve million. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well. Good for Damn him, it! Go to go to his Facebook. He should oh, have his Facebook. One. Yes, right. go to his Facebook page. He'll have the big announcement on there. Everyone can see the All T-shirts. Right. Well, the way everybody we, we talks... want to try to help the champ. The champ needs to sell a lot of these Absolutely. shirts. Absolutely. Like... So what you want to first do is go on Facebook because that's the way I would sell a new product. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't do a press release. I wouldn't, you know, put it on marketplace. I not me, not me. I. I only do content marketing during the day, Andrew. I would do what we call in the business a soft opening on my personal Facebook page. That would make all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. But admittedly, he's got 535,000 likes. It's not really how it works, but um, let's see. And I would pin it to the top, right? That would be the logical thing. It has not loaded. So I would pin my t-shirts to the top of the page. Yes, that's a feature on Facebook. For those of you who don't know. So let's see if he pinned it to the top of the page, shall we? I think he should come out with a line of those damn masks he wears. <laughs> How many people actually follow this horseshit page? He looks Still like, the, he looks like, he, that are the he, show, looks like he could be the king to Angelina Jolie's. Uh, what's the move? That's the witch she's playing right now. Angelina uh, Jolie just brought it out again. The Disney. Oh, I oh. forget. Was she Maleficent or one of those? Yes, 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 yes. And she looks like okay. him. Okay, here we so go. You would want to post it right to the top, right? That's what that pin thing is right there, right? Right. Nope, that's not where it is, Andrew. He nope. pinned a video that he did back on May the 10th. That makes a lot of sense if I'm selling t-shirts. Oh, there, there it is. it is. He's going to do a merch launch, which he did yesterday at Tau. From seven to ten. Now let me tell you why this is funny, Andrew. I'll, I'll blow it up and. Hey, look, there's my launch. name. Like, there's my name. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it said like on it. Because you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me tell you why this is funny. He launched this for those of you who are not young. Seven to ten. It's not a club yet. I mean, the club doesn't really start till about eleven o'clock. Last time I checked. Yeah, is no that, doubt. No doubt. Bit, Younger than me, right? Yeah, you're so definitely he, not there at 7 p.m. <laughs> he's doing a, a merch launch at Tau in New York during dinner hours with a DJ. I shit you not. The fact that there is absolutely no press on this topic tells me about how well the bronze bomber line of shitware wound up. And for those of you, you, know, who you don't think there was a line around the block, huh? No. No, I do not. Hundred percent. Hey, one point eight thousand people. One point eight thousand. Don't you need like an S and a Z? I don't want to go out on a limb on his whole bomb squad, but um, bombs, bomb. Z hey, seriously, squad. have you seen? Bomb have you ever? Squad. Have you ever seen someone glorify the bronze medal as much as Deontay Wilder? I who came wants, third. Who? I came third. <laughs> Who wants a shirt that says bronze bomber? I can't. Oh, that means he came I would, I would, because my coach would think it is absolutely hilarious. Oh, I also yeah, think yeah. That the next shirt I'm coming out with was the only reason I entered this tournament was to get a t-shirt. Hey, t let a hey, third fate, third place killer. We should make that shirt for Deontay. Till this day, bro. <laughs> Till this day. I third am third place, place. Third place killer. I'm going to kill a man. And based on Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, he is the third place heavyweight right now. He is. I know. That's what Tyson said. He goes, he's always been about being uh, the third place guy. Even his name is the Bronze Bomber. <laughs> Kudos to Deontay Wilder for it's not awesome. disappointing. He's awesome. He took his... He took his bronze medal and made it this. He made it a closing line. That's I think awesome. you should go all the way with it. I'm number three. 
Now, here's the problem with I'm number three, because I did number three up on the screen the other day. And apparently the three is, if you make the three signal, it's too close to the white supremacy thing. And uh, so you can't hold up the number three and hold your pinky. You got to. You got to do oh, the. No, there's, that's white supremacy. That's and you can't do the six. butthole three. Like, how do you hold up a three? You can't do the Indian ear three, right? Because that's white supremacy. You can't do the one with the index finger because that's the butthole. Okay, three. That's not close. I, cool. so I guess. I don't know that one. How would you do that? Like, oh, you got the hang loose three. I feel like I should put these up on the screen. Um, so pinky, index finger, and thumb for the number three is okay still, right, Andrew? That well, would be unless like, you're a gang member. Well, unless you're a gang member, but <laughs> if I do, it's also hang loose, right? In Hawaii, or is that just thumb and it pinky? So no, um, no, it's I love you. No, no, it's I love yeah, you. I can share it with my daughter. I think it's I love you. I'd have to double check with her, as I crack her walking home like a mental patient. <laughs> she stayed late for band, and I'm watching her walk home on the phone. <laughs> without being too much of a helicopter father. Hi, if this is your first time uh, watching or listening to Fight Net Radio, welcome. We are here to talk about uh, Deontay Wilder. So uh, go out looking and at. Get, get your third place t-shirt is what we're trying to say. Get your third place. I'm number three t-shirt. <laughs> and coming soon to Fight Net Radio uh, gear on our website will be the I'm number three t-shirt. But uh, right now, if you're watching the video, you're looking at uh, Deontay's 40 impeccable knockouts because the only thing good in a Deontay Wilder fight is just watching him throw a right hand. So right. I watched, before we get into the crazy-ass shit he said today, Andrew, mm. um, and he was in rare fucking form. No doubt about it. He was rare. He can talk like that. He's fighting Dominic Brazil, for God's sakes. He can say he wants to kill him. He can say all kinds of crazy crap. Um, I watched the Luis Ortiz fight uh, again last night, or the night before. I, I believe I was texting you. And yeah. my final assessment of Deontay Wilder, he might be possibly the worst boxing <laughs> heavyweight we have literally ever had. Like, his skill is really shockingly bad. It's bad. The Yeah, the technique, the skill level. I know. I, hey, the guy's got heart. He's got a right hand. You know that. You talked about the right He's hand. He's got insane speed. He has insane speed and an insane right hand. But his <laughs> boxing is not even amateurish. It's just shockingly bad. Like he here from this webcam that somebody took because he had many a fight that were not even televised. Because nobody wanted to see Deontay Wilder beat nobody. And, and Lee, we got to come to an agreement. He lost to Tyson Fury. Um, and not an agreement, but they, people need to understand. It, you can't look at Deontay Wilder and, and think, oh, well, he's he's undefeated right now. So what would he have done against the, the past greats? He didn't beat Tyson Fury. Um, there's there's at least four rounds, I believe, in that fight, 12-round fight, that they credited Deontay Wilder with one punch landed. One, Lee, in three minutes. Yeah, it, it is it is the same thing as watching the Luis Ortiz fight back, right? He's losing badly going into those last rounds. It's like he's not digging out of this ditch. And he pops him with a big punch. I mean, he does the same thing. I'm not saying Deontay Wilder isn't going to put a glove on you. I'm just saying if you can withstand one or two punches from him and figure out what Tyson Fury figured out, right? Don't give this man space to throw that arm and stay up on him. He's completely beatable. I think Tyson Fury built the template. If Tyson Fury I... fought Deontay Wilder again, I think Deontay Wilder not only loses, I think he gets knocked out. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's exactly why they, they didn't want the rematch so fast. They will take the rematch down the line because of the pay-per-view money behind it, but they didn't want it right immediately because of that reason. Uh, that was Tyson Fury in out of shape. You allow Tyson Fury to get in shape mentally and physically, he destroys Deontay Wilder that night. You guys, he kind of destroyed him already, all right? You give Deontay two rounds, two punches, I don't care. The other 10... Tyson Fury owned that fight. Um, they, there wasn't a lot of punches landed, 
but there was a lot of punches missed. Okay, he the defense, the ring generalship, the outlanding, the out throwing, it all came from one side. So um, no, and I can sit here and honestly say, I don't know if he puts a glove on Evander Holyfield or Mike Tyson. Lennox Lewis, maybe Evander Lennox, Holyfield would kill him. Exactly. Lee, they're too kill fast him. on the inside. These guys bob and weave, they get on the inside and they take your your soul uh, in the fight. You know what I mean? Um, maybe George, he beats George Foreman because Foreman would have allowed him to hit him with that. It would have took some of those right hands. Um, but these other fighters back in the 80s, that it, even like a Joe Frazier, how Joe Frazier's head movement was, no no puncher like Deontay Wilder's hitting that, that moving target. The man can't hit someone who's standing still in front of him. He has a hard time of landing that punch. Now you're telling me he's going to land on, on a Frazier who's dipping and dodging as he's coming in? I don't see it. Or a Mike Tyson? Fucking, you're nope. crazy. You're he's crazy. not kicking Tyson, and for some of you very psychotic, stupid, non-boxing historians, <laughs> go watch the Ali uh, two-part documentary. He doesn't fucking touch Ali. He doesn't touch Ali. I didn't even want to bring Ali's name up. It's not even that level. I've heard it. I've heard it with these fucking Deontay Wilder sycophants who believe that yeah. he legitimately is, you know, his 40-0 and record. Uh, the reason I put the 40-0 and knockouts up I want everybody to pay attention who he's knocking out here. And we've said it on the show. If Andrew wanted to become a professional boxing tomorrow, let's we'll go back to the Lee won $300 million lottery scenario, right? I win $300 million, Andrew. And you say, you know, Lee, my live stream is to be a 20 and 0 heavyweight or middle. We could make you drop weight. We could put Oof. you in a middle weight. Damn. All right. Fucking you clambuterol, could, baby. No whatever. drug testing. What, in what my do you weigh right now? 200? Two bills? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. All right. Easy. We can put you in as a heavyweight. It still doesn't matter, Andrew. And here's I'm why. I'm not doing no heavyweight. I want clenbuterol, damn it. All right. I want to look like Saul Alvarez. All Arr. right. Keep him in a middleweight. <laughs> and here's legit. And we've said it on the show repeatedly. Shout out to Sam, by the way, who, who's a writer in Australia who listens to us, who always <laughs> jokes about this. Right? Do I think I can get 20 fights for Andrew where he gets 20 KOs? And will I spend more than a hundred grand making it happen we know we can we know we can we know we can yeah. we know we can and andrew will live out his dream as living this bizarre rocky style thing probably make the undercard of some pretty heavy fights too <laughs> shout out to the nevada athletic commission none of your fights are fixed allegedly uh with that said or you could just fight complete shit bags like deontay did because we've heard of Oddly Harrison again, right, Andrew? Yeah, He's really punch. charging up the big pile there. He's really somebody to keep an eye on. Look at that. That's a fucking assault. I don't even it? know what he's doing. Like, he just throws. watch him. Just watch. Look at these punches. <laughs> Dude, he throws like a retard. Uh, and if you have a child that has special needs, <laughs> let me make it apparently clear. Andrew and I grew up in an era where if you fought like this on the schoolyard, were you not just doing like retard punching? <laughs> That's going to get me shit from somebody who has a special needs kid. I'm not talking about your kid. Their special needs. I'm talking about Deontay being a retard. Like he said <laughs> stupid shit. He fights stupid shit. His punches aren't accurate. Sorry, they're not. But if you throw in that, look, who the fuck? Nikolai Furtha. <laughs> not Francois Botha, not like you're telling me that this is what I'm pinning it on to oh, say Deontay's the best oh, in the world. That right hand is deadly. Lee, there's the it walk. It is. There's the walk. <laughs> He's stepping in and throwing it. It's an awesome punch. He's a one trick pony. I'll say He's it right now, every pony. Deontay Wilder yeah. fan. I'm going to say it right now to all the Deontay Wilder fans. 100%. He gets so fucked up by Tyson Fury in a rematch or Anthony Joshua. That's why he's not taking the $100 million. He wants yeah. to go out 50 and 0 as a heavyweight, having fought shitbags and douchebags like Dominic Brazil, Dillian White. He wants the B team. And I'm not even sure. Hey, look, there's your dive. There's your dive. That's oh, yeah, no spot doubt. right there. That was the first round. Punch didn't even land. They they punched any these guys get tattoos together. They're sparring partners. Look, I'm not even a hundred percent convinced on the Luis Ortiz thing because he had taken much harder shots than the one that actually stops him. 
Well, what Ortiz, what Ortiz was complaining about is they never counted him out. See, right. Ortiz, they just, Ortiz, waved, it. They just, they waved, just it. waved it off. Yeah, yeah, they knew his ass was down on them scorecards. <laughs> hey, if there's it's a not chance, fair it's... because he had a great game plan. He had a great game plan. He utilized his old age and his great protection skills that he had. He's got that weird George Foreman cover-up shit, yeah, which made just, it impossible for him to do that winging retard shit he does. Yeah, the jab. Remember how much the jab nullified like all of Deontay's offense? <laughs> no, here's look, it's saying suggested right now on the top of the screen, right? All 22 of the Anthony Joshua knockouts. He's not going to look like a guy who barely made it to the Olympics. Like, I'm still not even sure how he got on the Olympic team unless we just didn't have any heavyweights at the time. Oh, we don't. No, no, that's that's absolutely it. Lee, he's six foot seven and 220 pounds. This guy is supposed to be in football. He's Watch supposed to be again. in basketball. Watch this again, Andrew. Here's what I mean. Watch this knockout again. When he Speak throws back. this, his head coming down, if this dude's a counterpuncher at all like Ortiz, which is how he got jacked up by Ortiz, he comes back around right there and clocks that fucking guy. <laughs> Block, counterpunch. I'll say it again. Go watch the Luis Ortiz fight. He's blocking and countering and jacking him up. Now, he's a big dude, and he's a strong dude, and he's young, and he's tough as fuck. I'm not going to lie about Deontay. I'll tell you what his attributes are. He can take a big league punch. He has to with the way he files. He's so open that everybody must hit him once or twice. Okay, so he's got to take some punches. But this crazy-ass windmill shit he does, right, where he crashes in and then just starts winging, it's stupid. That, that, what the fuck is that, Andrew? <laughs> Holy beep, Bermain Stravine. Could we find a bigger, slower cow for him to beat up on? Another, look at that. Just went right oh, down. Oh, Stravine is such a mess. Yeah, man. Standing belly. in front of him taking punches big without. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It literally is ridiculous. <sighs> should we get to uh, the crazy shit that Deontay said today? Yes, so... we should. I only heard one of them. I wonder what you got for oh, me. Oh, I... I've got all of the press quotes for all you. Right, let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, hey, we did do the over under on the death thing. So he did. Oh, we get one it's in for that. Every, it's in every single <laughs> thing. We'll start with Good. we said CBS over. Sports, Andrew. I'll just go down the list and we'll do the top five because there's even a fucking TMZ story in here. Like everybody was on this today. So we'll start with uh, CBS Sports while you guys enjoy Deontay Wilder's knockouts because. I don't see any difference happening on Saturday night. This one coming to us. Who wrote this one? Give credit to him. Brian Campbell, also a big uh, wrestling fan as well. Shout out to Brian Campbell at BC Campbell for CBS. Good gig if you can get it, being a writer. Let's see what Brian Campbell wrote if my screen will actually roll down. I can't wait for my new computer tomorrow, Andrew. When unbeaten WBC heavyweight Deontay Wilder faces mandatory challenger Dominic Brazil on Saturday night, it will be the culmination of a two-year beef that began with harsh words and a melee inside an Alabama hotel lobby in 2017. Is this the story of how Tupac got shot? And, and, well, mean, they, he made it sound really weak. He said a melee where, what did he, arguing? What did he yeah, say there? How did he argument, say? Uh, harsh words harsh and a melee word. inside an Alabama <laughs> hotel in 2017. Is this where I I don't keep up on the rap culture? Did Tupac or Biggie or somebody get killed in 2017 at this melee, Andrew? The way they're talking about it? No, no, sir. Yeah, out the gate, I think they just exchanged harsh words, Lee. Harsh words, right? I love that. Harsh words, Andrew. The trash talk between the two teams has been heavily entering into this week. The Clash at Barclays Center in New York, uh, showtime on 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and having endured criticism during the initial press conference for advising Brazil to make funeral arrangements ahead of the fight. Of course, with that said, now my screen isn't scrolling down. Okay, there we go. Uh, from 33-year-old Brazil's perspective, Wilder, too far, will pay for it on Saturday. This is Brazil's quotes. I'm super upset. Damn it, dude, don't be so firm. I'm super upset, Andrew. Super upset. Gosh darn it. 
I'm super upset. You never want to hear that from an individual. And I don't care what sport it's in. What an asshole. Brazil, you deserve to be knocked out, bro. Yeah, you're going to (laughs) die. That's not a good start. I don't even know what to say because it's just actually ridiculous. I mean, on some level, I I can't even. I'll try again, Andrew. You know how I like to read the articles as they are and run my commentary. All right. I'm super upset. Golly, Andy, I'm just super upset. Woo. You never want to hear an individual, and I don't care what sport it is, uh, especially in the sport of boxing, who has the ability to put someone else in a bad state of mind or hurt them physically. Talk like that. I don't think he understands what he's saying. He's just not all there, It, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, but dude, seriously, that's what your retort is? I mean, I'm trying not to be douchey about it, but it's not a real strong retort, man. I'm just being perfectly honest. <laughs> We're trying to sell a fucking ticket Both here. Both and I have knocked out individuals <laughs> with shots where I am like, oh, God, I hope he's going to be okay from this. Really? That's what you think when you knock somebody out? Gosh darn it. Hope he's okay. Maybe they did just exchange harsh words. When did everybody in the sport of boxing become pussies? I mean, seriously. Don't get me wrong. No, uh, even get started. Well, I'm glad we got some Brazil comments. Let's uh, go back to our leaderboard and uh, hear what Deontay has to say about Brazil, shall we? Let's just you know, go the other direction. Hey, that was pretty boring on. Brazil did not help sell a ticket today if those he's were his sell, comments. He's not selling tickets, bro. Yeah. He's not, he's not in the business of selling tickets for this fight. He <laughs> knows that he's a five to one dog. He knows it. But USA Today jumped on the Deontay, Be- uh, ba- Deontay Wilder bandwagon. This coming to us from Josh Peters of USA Today. The headline reads Deontay Wilder's Saturday night's opponent. You ready for this, Andrew? If he dies. He dies. He went full Ivan Drago at the press conference. <laughs> he hella wants that movie. Man, he wants that movie, man. <sighs> He's trying to get Creed 3. Telling you, Lee. I've heard that's that. What this whole, that's what this whole act is all about. Now he's doing the Drago line. All right. The bad blood between heavyweight Deontay Wilder and his upcoming opponent, Dominic Brazil, appears to have reached dangerous levels. See, now that's passion in an article, Andrew. It's dangerous levels as they prepare to score off Saturday at Barclay Center in New York. If he dies, he dies, Wilder told uh, sports. Uh, no, thanks. I can't believe the number of pop-ups, and I'm actually offended by them while I'm trying to read this article. Yeah, Come no on. doubt. I hate no, that. No, thanks. Okay. Uh, if he dies, he dies. This is boxing. This is not a gentleman's sport. This is a gladiator sport. And with bad blood, we know I possess the power. We do. Actually, you're 40 0 and 1 with 39 KOs. He's coming off a tra- draw against Tyson Fury. Come on. Now it's just automatically popping up shit, which is even more irritating, Andrew. Like, I cannot believe the number of pop ups coming up on the USA Today website. Uh, Wilder, come on. Come on. Work with me, USA Today. <laughs> I got another fucking ad, Andrew. I'm not even making this shit up. Okay. Uh, where is it? Bad blood stems from an incident February 27th. Yeah, we got that. All right. That's okay, Wilder said. Everybody has their own people that are their friends, so I understand. Uh, What is not okay, according to Wilder, is Brazil made threatening remarks to Wilder's brother later that night at a Birmingham hotel. Ooh. The plot thickens. (laughs) The plot thickens. (laughs) He told my brother, and it was confirmed by other people, because I've got eyes and ears. Everywhere. I kick your ass. I kick your ass. <laughs> we going to know. <laughs> that Brazil made the statement, I'll kill you. If my family wasn't there, I'd kill you and your entire family. He's making this up. There's no, no way that Andy Griffith. Hey, let's, yeah, let's go back and read. There's uh, no what? fucking <laughs> way that Andy Griffith and his, gosh darn it. Those are some harsh words. <laughs> that's no way to talk about boxing you know what when i knock somebody out i often think to myself boy howdy i sure hope they're okay i start praying i start look i immediately think to myself god please protect this fighter 
not Deontay. You threatened his family. So he killed his whole family. They would never make that shit up and tell me that so that I'd be more pissed off. I'm not weak minded. I know the truth. You know, Deontay Wilder is literally an inch away from being one of those crazy people that believes the planet is flat. Or like the Illuminati runs boxing. Like he's that close to being that crazy. Like well, the he's, shit he's, he's worth 16 million. He says he's still fighting the man every day. <laughs> right. Right. Because he doesn't know how to sign a hundred million dollar deal, which yeah. Yeah, I, I know. I don't this... want to get into the semantics of how pathetic his thought process 140. is. 140. 140 million. Let's not forget that. It wasn't just 100 million. They had another fight on that contract for 140. So, <sighs> shockingly insane. The thing about it is, in America, if you want to get people on your side, add women and children in there, he said, and that's what he's tried to do. What? 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 Oh, wait. I must have missed the Xena Warrior Princess thing he said here. He said some crazy shit, and I. Blew right by it. All right, that's okay. He's going to kill my family, and I don't take threats lightly. So Wilder said he later tracked down Brazil. Sure he did. I just put my hand in Brazil's face, and I told him, never come to my city, threaten my family, don't ever do that. And it escalated from there. His coach started pushing and shoving, and that's when my team came in. They entered the building, and then it was a whole scuffle. It was a scuffle, Andrew. Uh, when it became a whole scuffle, just Dominic Brazil, just the words that Deontay Wilder uses makes me laugh. When it became a whole scuffle, not only was Brazil running around, but his wife was uh, running around as well. Like she was Xena Warrior Princess screaming and hollering and doing what she was doing. Wilder said he's angriest about Brazil claiming Wilder's endangered Brazil's wife and children. Uh, the thing about it in America, if you want to get people on your side, add women and children in there, he said. And that's what he tried to do. So you think he made this shit up? Uh, Brazil is an opportunist. He's one of those guys uh, that will waste water or ice in your establishment. What? Yeah. And then uh, sip uh. on it. On purpose, just to sue. Oh, slip on it, just to sue you. Not sip on it. Slip on it, just to sue you. That's what type of person he is. For that reason, I got bad blood. That's your purpose. Okay, let's let's clarify why he's going to kill Brazil on Saturday, Andrew. Just I just tell me if I'm crazy about this. He talks shit. Brazil talks shit. Then his wife talks shit, and then Deontay said, "You better shut your fucking mouth, bitch." before I put a fucking slap on it, which I guarantee that's what he said. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But would it not be fair to say that knowing Deontay Wilder, he said, you better calm your bitch down? I don't. I have no idea what was said, Lee. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's speculate. <laughs> All right, yeah, you find that. You can speculate that that happened. Yes, sir. If I just you were in a situation that... with your wife and something went down and you're yelling at another guy at the bar... What are the statistical probabilities that the other dude said, you better shut your wife up? Yeah. No, that's pretty high. It is pretty yeah, high. Right? That's usually what starts the fight is the woman. Uh, it's uh, straight up the woman. The woman gets involved. The guy calls her a bitch. And that's it. Now you're right. on. Now the spotlight's on you. What are you going to do? You know? Dude. <laughs> I can safely tell you this. I can safely tell you this 100%. The one and only situation that I've had in quite some time was because, and this is not me being a dick, a gay guy turned around and made a comment to Diana while we were at the Hard Rock and he was drunk. And I walked over to his friends because as she was walking down the hall, she was taking off her shoes to go kill him um, with the shoe, right? She's <laughs> she's hardcore gangster Cuban. She was going to kill him with a shoe. Uh, and she may have possibly said, I'm going to go kill that fag which I said, now that's on camera and that's kind of a hate crime and you can't do that shit. <laughs> like I'm just standing there bone sober in the room while four drunks are about to brawl with an enraged Cuban. At which point I said, I have to think smart about this situation, Andrew. I walked over to his friends and said, here's how this is going to be. You're going to walk with a limp if you don't grab your dude and get out of here right now with him. Because she's 
seriously going to hurt him. I didn't go to him. He was drunk. Fuck it. He was stupid enough to make a comment about her. It's on you, bro. She can fight her own battles. I'm just happy she wasn't carrying a gun that night. She would have popped his ass right there. She might have yelled, kill the fag, while she was shooting the gun. But aye, aye, aye. Allegedly, Andrew. Allegedly. Allegedly. You have to say those things. Uh, Brazil is an opportunist. And, and in boxing, you can come be able to harm a man to the point of killing a man and get paid for that in the same night if it happens. I'm not going to apologize. He's been asking for this all along. He's been asking to die, huh? He's been <laughs> hands down, without a doubt. A win for myself is a win for the world. <laughs> uh, he's been asking for this. Woo! Nobody hey. no longer wants to see. The oh, this is Brazil's comments. Uh, Brazil said through Sky Sports, hand down, without a doubt, a win for myself is a win for the world. Nobody no longer wants to see Deontay Wilder as the WBC champion. That I agree with, a hundred percent. 100%. I think Deontay Wilder watched the Muhammad Ali video last night like I did, right? And he went, I'm going full bad guy. I'm going full bad guy, just like my idol, Muhammad Ali. I fight just like him. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Shouldn't be your idol either. You're an embarrassment. You're not a leader. You're not an activist. You're a sh like Deontay is such a shitbag, Andrew. I'm trying really <laughs> hard to make. I want, I, want to be, <laughs> I want to be a De Deontay Wilder fan. Let me let me say this for the record, Andrew. I want to be on the Deontay Wilder fan train, okay? But the dude says crazy ass shit. He turns down money. He claims the man is trying to get him. He doesn't do anything even remotely smart. Like he's a completely uneducated nincompoop. Yeah. That's a good word. I like the word nincompoop. I think that's being very fair. Help me to understand this, Andrew, from your perspective. How bad do you want to see Brazil knock out Deontay Wilder? <laughs> no, you know, I, like I said, I, I want Deontay. Deontay battered on, bet on himself. I would like to see him win so he can stay in the negotiations or the talks with the with the Anthony Joshua. That's a fight that I always thought would happen. I believe when both uh, Deontay was about 20-0 and, and Joshua was 14-0, and 0, we started actually matching these two up together on this show. So I would like to see the fight eventually happen. Um, it's a little nervous, though, that it's not because they're going to milk this thing for too long. Um, you know, you, you've you already seen the PBC has ruined uh, their junior middleweight division. You know, that junior middleweight division, everyone has losses now. None of them are going to be this the undefeated, undisputed guy going up against Spence anymore. Um, they, so... It, you know, Deontay keeps playing like this, keeps playing with fire. We know he, okay, he has a good chin, but he's been rocked in his last two fights. Bad. Um, his skills are still the same. He's not, he, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of negativity to Deontay's game, which makes me think we're never going to see him uh, face Joshua, well, at least being undefeated. Um, especially if they do go with the Tyson Fury rematch, I do not have Deontay Wilder winning that fight. And I don't know if Saturday can change that because we've seen Breezel blown out before. Now, one thing good about Tony Harrison or no, excuse me, Julian Williams brought this up. J-Rock the other day when he beat, uh, um, Heard. He said you can't count a fighter out just because of one loss. Well, you know, Breezel's going to have a chance to to show us that that he's come back from his one defeat. Um, but it, it's, it's going to be hard because uh, it was a mismatch when he went up against Joshua. He didn't have the chin to, to stick with the big guys. Breezel's really never fought in anyone else of, in this caliber. I've got to say, even though as bad as Deontay Wilder is, his power, his experience is better than Breezel still because he fought Ortiz and he fought Tyson Fury. Um, beating uh, beating Ortiz and getting the draw with Fury in that 12th round, almost knocking Tyson Fury out. He's been in the big moments. He's shown up. Um, so he's got that edge on Brazil. Breezel, really, Lee, he has the one-two. And that's why I think he needs to come out and throw that really fast and try to dictate the pace of this fight early 
Um, he can't make this a chess match with uh, um, Deontay Wilder because I do not think he has the defense of a Tyson Fury or the chin to, to take the shots that will, will be coming from, from Wilder. 100%. 100%. I 100% agree. I Look, he could have a near flawless performance on Saturday, right? He could be winning going into the 12th round. What I can say about Deontay Wilder, and don't Deontay Wilder fans get this all twisted, okay? He's gonna put a, he's gonna put that glove on his face once. He is. He just is. He's done it to everybody. I'm 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 not going to dispute the power in his right hand at all. I'm not even gonna dispute the speed that he has. What I'm saying is, if he winds up with a guy who knows how to box, who who can think, who can who's got a chin, right? like an Anthony Joshua, like a Klitschko, like or a Tyson Houston. Fury, th- these guys would pick him apart. They'll, you know, if you watch, I keep saying it, go back and watch the Luis Ortiz fight. He figured it out. He just went down and that was the end of the fight. They came in and he looked about as bewildered as everybody else. Um, and I don't know if that's fair to Luis. I, I guarantee he's not on a short list to get a rematch. I don't believe it anymore. I think Deontay is, he believe. here's the worst part. Deontay believes his hype. The way they built him, Andrew, this dude really believes his hype. His corner barely talks to him. They're not really game planning or adjusting throughout the fight. I really examined it, right? Because that he was in the deep water in that fight. And after examining it, and again, go watch Tyson Fury, go watch. Uh, yeah, you got to watch, yeah. yeah. His corner doesn't. You know what you're doing in there, champ? Yeah, I got it. What? What? Who says that? Who says that shit? Well, Lee, you can tell by the way the guy fights that his corner. I mean, come on, they don't. They were throwing frisbees at the kid the other day, the man the other day. Frisbees. He's ducking fucking frisbees, Lee. Who punches like a frisbee? Fast, yeah, he's right. I mean, fast. man, your head movement is unbelievable, champ. You're dodging these frisbees. <laughs> I gotta be on. I gotta be honest, Andrew. I'm not sure, even at my age, whether or not I can dodge a frisbee. <laughs> Holy smokes, man! Like I don't know what the hilarity in. Oh, look at his legs! Look how small his leg is. The, the, those calves. Does any of his trainers worry about leg day? No. Look at the way he throws a combination or a. He's got one punch. If you keep, if you he's guys got, watch. The but video, it's a tremendous. Wait, I'm gonna be pro. Ah, who cares? He has an amazing right hand. Yeah, yes, he does. Yes, he does. But but I still see I I already have him losing one time and it's the second time he fought someone that was relevant in the sport. So right. and and he barely so let we'll see what happens, Brazil. It, that's bullshit though, because Brazil is not a he's not an elite. Like you're not gonna go, walk away from the Dominic fight and go, damn, he would have knocked out Holyfield in his prime. Did you see him tonight? And like, stop it. He he's going up against a guy he should beat. You know, it's it's fucking insane. It should, be, it should be one round. It should be. Somebody needs to explain to me why Deontay's walking around saying this is his mandatory. Once again, sometimes I think the boxing media is just a little too nice, right? To, to some of these fighters that bullshit that right in front of you. They lie right to your face. What do you mean Dominic Breezel's the mandatory? What mandatory? I thought your mandatory is Dillian White. I thought that guy that that has had two elimination fights to keep his ranking, I thought that's your mandatory. We didn't, Dominic Brizel's not his mandatory. Here he goes, yeah. talking the shit, though, and everyone buys it in. Oh, dude, good. Thanks, champ. Thanks, champ. What? You, you, you've got a belt, an organization that is totally screwing a man right now that is, that is literally, like Deontay likes to say, put his life on the line to get the opportunity to fight for this fucking title. Has anyone asked that question to, to, to uh, Wilder? Why are you hiding behind your promotional company? Why don't you as the champ come out and say, I want to fight Dillian White next. I'm done with this. This man will not have to wait. He doesn't have to fight Tyson Fury. He's the number one contender. He should fight me. Why isn't anyone asked Wilder this? In this fucking fight week, we're we're in what? Day two? 
And nobody, the biggest story out of this thing was it was how Dillian White was done in by the WBC. Where's the follow up? Nice job. Uh, Deontay Wilder was stopped in front of a bodega because that's the way that TMZ does their business. Um, TMZ Sports reporting, Deontay Wilder says Anthony Joshua is straight up delusional. And if he thinks he holds all the cards when it comes to negotiating their long-awaited super fight, saying AJ is now a desperate man. (laughs) Wilder couldn't wait to fire back at Joshua after British heavyweight told TMZ Sports that Wilder should come see me about putting a fight contract together uh we did that five times wilder told us you know they denied me what what about a dq in this fight you know i'm watching the highlights here the guy can't control himself when he has no problems with his opponent what happens when he does hurt brazil and maybe brazil takes a knee oh and he hits him after he goes down yeah just beats the shit out of him yes you know, because he wants to kill a man. You know, if he's really <laughs> oh my got this God. Itch, If that happened, I would literally say you should call the police on the spot and put him in jail. Would be the best thing to happen ever. Yeah, you you know, it's it's uh and and he it's his fault. I'm gonna keep. I'll try not to. Cut. It's his fault. You can't keep talking about killing people. Oh, I'm serious. I'm gonna murder him. I'm dead serious. Really? Then the guy takes a knee and you hit him in the back of the head. God forbid. (laughs) We did that five times, said Anthony Joshua. Wilder told us, and they denied me, so I don't want to hear him talking about coming to see me because we came and saw you. Y'all still ran. Oh, no, this is Wilder saying it. We did that five times. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see... His uh, shout out on what is the big Muslim holiday that just passed Ramadan? Is that what how you say it? And excuse me if I'm wrong, you guys, but is that how you say it, Lee? I don't know. Are you? Being well, there was a big holiday that Deontay gave a shout out to all the the Muslim brothers. I guess you would say. Okay. And you know what he put? At, you know what he put at the bottom? Till this day. Nope. Hashtag bomb squad. People thought. People really gave him shit for that one. What yeah. A dick. What it's, is it? But, hey, it's I don't think he knew. No, no, no. You're you're acting like he's in te- you're acting like he knew what that I don't think he knew. I think he was just being Deontay, hashtag bomb squad, you know, because that's what he yells, not knowing what the fuck he was at. He's just not the brightest. Go ahead. I, I just had to tell you that. I didn't want to put it on our page when I seen it. Uh, there you go. There you go. Now Wilder says Joshua is desperately seeking a high profile opponent and he has nowhere to go essentially claiming joshua has lost all negotiating power now you want me to come and see you nah now it's our terms when we want to come and see you says wilder hey see how you turn that one around (laughs) what a dick He also managed in the TMZ article to reiterate how he wants to kill uh, Deontay, uh, kill Brazil. Uh, When you make it personal for me, now I really want to hurt you, Alder said. I'm the man with the big right hand, baby. I possess all the power. What a dick. (laughs) I mean, I, what a dick. Have we spent enough time on what he did today? What a dick. He's a dick, Andrew. You this know, is why very... this is why I can't ever interview a guy like Deontay Wilder. Oh, right? I know you'll say I'm the wrong thing. Stu- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still literally stuck on being on when he's on the Joe Rogan podcast and he's asked if he's doing plyometrics training and he does all the metrics, Andrew. <laughs> I do all that stuff. I do all the metrics. What? What it what? You don't even know how you train. Yeah, I eat real good. I have beans and rice. No, remember he said he doesn't run at all. He only swims. You know? Um, Why is he still around, Andrew? You promised well, uh, me he'd one, be gone by no, now. No, 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 no. Well, he should be. Don't, damn it, Lee. Don't give me that bullshit. We all know that WBC. It's your fault. We all know that judge sitting on the left side of Jose Suleiman is the reason why he's still the WBC champ today. All right, eight rounds, 
an eight round lead did not even need round 12's knockdown to win I, on that man's card. And you know what's I, funny? Uh, America still bitches about Canelo Mayweather. They still, oh my God, man, Canelo got a draw from that girl. Ah! This dude had a win against Tyson Fury without the 12th round knockdown, and you have nothing to say. It's shame on all of you. Andrew. What? Why is Deontay still even, around? We don't even, well, WBC likes him. Jose Suleiman likes him. I mean, I understand that the WBC has had a history of shitty heavyweight champions, right? The no, Don what do you King, mean? What are you talking oh, about? Come on, the Don King era of WBC heavyweight champions. Tyson, Riddick Bowe, no, Lennox Lewis. No, you can't Lewis. count, you can't. Fucking Riddick, are you talking about the fishing, the trash, where he drops oh, the fucking... I mean, I don't give a damn. Game? Riddick Bow Riddick Bo and that Evander Holyfield one fight is one of the best heavyweights of that era. So, and you gotta, you gotta remember... The original bomb squad guy. Riddick, Riddick Bow Riddick Riddick Bo knocked out Lennox Lewis in the amateurs, right? And they said Lennox Lever wanted to give Riddick Bow a shot in the pros, and they never did see each other. So, no, nah, Riddick Bow is a little... Riddick Bow is a bad dude. He had his time. I know he fell in love with cakes, but he had his time. <sighs> that fight is this Saturday. Take, we'll have betting for you at the end of the week. Two, he takes two out of three from Holyfield, correct? Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, he got and a I little help from Fan Man, but yes, you are correct. Yeah, so so no, he had his moment. Um, Yeah, we'll see. We will see. He hasn't gone away yet, Andrew. Makes me sad. Well, I'll tell you, he's back on the B side. So, uh, seriously, you don't even have to watch uh, Deontay Wilder for the next few fights because he's kind of tied up for a year and a half. He, he's not going to be fighting Fury or or uh, or um, Joshua until well, his Kawanaki. Joshua needs to come and see him, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know. The, the fastest sellout in Madison Square Garden – Right? Wasn't that? Didn't he break a, a record for the fastest pre-sale so, sold out records or what? Uh, tickets? Yeah, I'm sure Joshua is not uh, hurting to see Wilder anytime soon. Now turning to our Facebook page because I found this on accident, posted it on our site. So first shout out to Fight Posium. Go follow them on Facebook. Uh, they basically animate comic book covers. They're into... awesome. Fight Posium is a great site. Yeah. Great idea, great yep. uh, great art, great ideas. Uh, their little uh, gift to boxing is making these comic book covers, right? Uh, the one that I have up, if you're not watching the video, is about Crawford and Spence and Walter White supremacy, and they call it, right? So you've got Crawford in one photo who's tied up and locked down to top rank, and you got a, a chain around Spence who's got a PBC lock. And it's showing the fans fighting on Twitter in the background about who is the supreme welterweight. And it says it all, Andrew. I mean, it literally says it all. This fight's just not going to happen. It, it, yeah, but it doesn't say it all. And what, what I don't like about this particular uh, comic book cover, Top Rank is not holding back Terrence Crawford. The last time that I checked, Bob Arum said 50-50. Bob Arum asked for Spence and Heyman to call. Uh, Terrence Crawford called out Spence. Um, this is not the, the top rank fights with other promotional companies. They have no problem going across the table. This is all about the PBC. The PBC are the ones that oh, we only fight guys from the PBC. It's your side. You're on the wrong side of the street. You've never heard top rank ever say that. In no major fight in boxing history have we ever heard anybody talk about, oh, this fight can't be made because you're on the wrong side of the street. This is about the PBC trying to hold on to, to whatever they have in the welterweights, which I think is dying out But as the, the every day goes by. I'm sorry. All these guys are in their 30s. They're almost out. This is over here coming soon. I mean, Keith Thurman's coming off an injury of two years. We don't even know. Keith Thurman couldn't even make a showcase out of a showcase fighter in Josito Lopez. I don't know who Keith Thurman is. You know, Spence could mock that up. Spence could mop up Manny Pacquiao, but this does nothing for him. 
I agree. Uh, but Andrew, more importantly, joining us on the phone right now, a Andrew. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait, wait a minute. I got one more thing. The welterweight supremacy has already been decided, and it should be Terrence Crawford. Shame on all of you guys for not putting Terrence Crawford on top. Terrence Crawford beat Jeff Horn, who beat Manny Pacquiao, and who, that was the number one welterweight at the time. Jeff Horn, I don't care if it was a controversial decision, Bob Arum's fixing, he beat the man by decision. And last time I checked, all you PBC nut fucking huggers, Manny Pacquiao never rematched Jeff Horn, even though that fight did major success. I'm talking 3 million views on ESPN. I'm talking 40,000 fucking people in Australia watch that thing live. Major success. He wanted no fucking rematch. Why if he won the fight so easily? So then so then Jeff Horn is the champ. Jeff Horn defeated Pacquiao by decision. Terrence Crawford knocked him out, what, in nine rounds? Eight rounds? Knocked him down three times, I believe. What the fuck you mean welterweight supremacy? We already know who the number one welterweight is. Stop playing. Stop hiding behind Al Heyman's skirt like the PBC does. Fucking nut huggers, man. Terrence Crawford's the best welterweight in the world. And fucking Spence is ducking him. Point blank, period. If Spence wanted to be the best fighter in the welterweights, he fights Crawford. If Spence wanted to be the best fighter in the world, he fights Crawford. All roads lead through Crawford. Don't tell me that these two are tied down to promotional companies. That's bullshit. You're believing their lies. Andrew, joining us on the phone, uh, I'm just getting this in my ear, a man who is very excited about the way you're talking about his fighter, uh, long-time contributor to the show. We are joined by Bob Arm. Hello, Andrew. Yes, sir. Just bullshit. So, uh, are you going to address the real issue with the PBC? Uh, what's that, Bob? They hate white people. <laughs> no, they do not. You can't talk like that. Well, you know, I didn't want to put out that press release a couple of weeks ago, Andrew, but I had to, right? I am a whitey after all, and that's the way it feels. <laughs> so let's really talk about what this comic book should have been, right? It should have been my picture animated with a bid rag X and uh, an Al Heyman. I don't know who you'd get to pose as Al Heyman since nobody's ever seen the fucking guy in public, but Al Heyman spray painting a giant red X through my face and no deal with Whitey. That's the truth of this fight. Some of these people have bought into the PBC model. I get it. You know what I mean? They're, they're wild. People like Wilder, people like Spence, the Charlo, Charlos, both brothers, Jamal and Jamal. Um, they're not. They're not looking to fight outside of the stable. They make a million bucks fighting fucking B-level opponents. It's good. It's good. You heard Spence. Talk about Crawford, because Crawford wants to fight Cal Brook. Spence is talking shit about that Cal Brook is his leftovers. The man has a fight with Sean Porter. Sean Porter lost to Cal Brook. What the fuck is he talking about? So I can guess by this conversation, you're not going to talk about the fact that I'm white. <laughs> has nothing to do with that. That was foolish of you. I think you had too much to drink when you talked when you said that. Anyways, I don't think Al Heyman. Al Heyman likes green. Right now, Al Heyman is making money off of these men, believing they're going to be the next Floyd Mayweather. Not one of these motherfuckers have made 150 million. They haven't even combined. I bet you they haven't made one of Floyd's checks at the end of his career. But they all have this belief. I'm the next Floyd. Al's going to make me the next Floyd. All I got to do is listen to Al, and I'm going to be making $30 million guaranteed. That's what they do. What the fuck has happened so far? People are taking defeats. Guys are getting passed by. We already see the new generation is coming. And guess what? Ain't too many of them signed to PBC. I'm dead serious on that. I don't. I can't remember last time PBC signed a major prospect like you hear Golden Boy and Top Rank and Matchroom Boxing doing all the time. Did you hear about my latest signing? 
Did you ahead. get my press release? Just came out today, Andrew. I found two twin white guys in Australia who box. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm signing all the whiteies, Andrew. If we're going to make this a black and white thing, I'm, I'm going to align myself with the whites. Hey. I'm not saying that just because I just signed Australians who are twins. And boy, are they fucking white, Andrew. Um, hey, they but watch fights. They're very white. <clears throat> there is a coming boxing war. You need to align yourself. Normally, I would have gone to Mexico, but Oscar stole all that business. I was doing a little bit of business in, in Puerto Rico, and then that fucking kid just shit the bed for me. So I'm going with the Australians, Andrew. Uh, that's going to be my country next. Terrence Crawford's a two-time undisputed champ in, in the lightweight, super lightweight division. He moved to the welterweights. He defeated the number one welterweight in the world in Jeff Horn, who had defeated Manny Pacquiao. Cal Brook is the number one prospect at this time, then goes to, over to the UK, defeats Cal Brook for his first title. Comes back. Gets a pay-per-view fight that they said did 360,000 buys. That's a good number on your first pay-per-view against a undefeated two-division, three-division, a three-division champion, Mikey Garcia. What the fuck is the holdup, you fans, you people? Why aren't you guys demanding Spence and Crawford now, not a year and a half from now? Are you serious? You really want you Pacquiao? Pacquiao. That, that's the guy you really want to see Spence fight. Pacquiao or Thurman or Porter. Oh, it, it's such bullshit. These two guys have no more proving to do. The money's already there. They're not, listen, not everyone can be Floyd. I'm sorry. It, not everyone's going to make $750 million in their career. You see the NFL? Are there, are, is everyone making freaking a hundred and something million dollars? No. And that sport's worth billions. He's lying to you guys. He's double-ending these deals. You guys take a defeat. You're out of the running for Floyd's money. You do understand that, right? You might get paid, but you're out of the Floyd Mayweather sweepstake as soon as that O goes, because that's not Floyd. Andrew, I don't want to shit on your segment, but I'm going to let everybody in on a big bombshell about Floyd Mayweather. Are you going to write this one down and write an article? Let's go. What do you got? Floyd Mayweather's really white. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> Go to fightnetradio.com. You can click on anything. We're going to run quickly through our Facebook page, cover some of the stuff we've put up that has been getting some social activity. Uh, please click the follow and like button. We'd appreciate it. It is a video-based page where you can see all of our little videos and all the shit we've been posting throughout the week. We try to keep everybody up. Our featured is still our Sunday show, on Hall of Famer Harold Letterman, that's uh, last week's episode. If this thing will load, cannot wait for my. Can I say it again? Cannot wait for this damn computer I bought, Andrew. I am so over using a six-year-old computer. Uh, we have lots of videos for you to look at. That's a picture of me and me at two different fights. Enjoy. Uh, also on our page is our post section. We do like to get socially involved. We do use Facebook as our primary vehicle to be socially involved. I'll say it again for everybody who thinks that Facebook is dead. It's the number three website in the world. Shut up. God damn kids. Uh, there's Deontay. We covered that. Uh, well, we can cover this, Andrew, because you posted it. I would not. It came across my feed. I didn't really give two shits about Albert Bell versus Andy Vences. Andy but, Vince is from the Bay Area. He's from San Jose. so That would explain why you did it. All right, tell me. Yeah. Here's your chance to give a plug. No, no, no. He's undefeated. By he's the on way, the based on the exposure numbers and the engagements, Andrew, I don't think anybody else gives a shit about this fight. Either. All right. Well, but, he's undefeated. Hold on. Hold on, Andrew. Joining us via phone again. He's been sitting on hold and waiting. Andrew. You talking yes. about the kid Vences? Yes. Good job. Fucking honest guy doesn't know shit about boxing. Fucking hate him. Does that mean I have self-hate? If I do a joke about me in the voice of somebody else, does that mean I have self-hate, Andrew, psychologically speaking? Mm, I don't know. Okay. 
So tell me about uh, June 8th in Reno, Nevada. I feel like I should uh, be playing it's just, I Reno. know, we'll do that later. It's just him on the undercard of Oscar Valdez's uh, fight. Um, he's from San Jose, California. He's undefeated, 22-0. Oh, oh, and one. 12 KOs. Yeah. There you go. Oh, All is right. it say it on there? <laughs> yeah, it says it on there. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> but the uh, yeah. reason uh, I – look – for those of you who don't know anything about marketing, nor you don't care about me getting ready to discuss marketing, I tend to look at the posts and see how many people it reaches and how many engagements. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to go too far out on a limb. Nobody cares about Andy Bell and Andy Vences, Albert Bell and Andy Vences, just by that number right there. But I could be wrong, Andrew. For the last couple of nights, Andrew, what's my name? Part one and part two from LeBron James and Maverick Carter. I have watched part one. I have not yet watched part two. Uh, have you had a chance to watch any of it? No, I don't have HBO anymore, so I gotta wait Smart until. For you. Yeah, I'll download well, a copy and send. No, I'll get you a hot copy, bro. I'll get you a hot copy. That's fine, but yeah, yeah. no, you gotta watch it. It's well documented. Um, I already knew the history behind Muhammad Ali. I think what's really important to note is his social impact, which is what they really highlight in the first part. I don't know. I haven't watched the second part yet. Uh, but the first part really makes it a point of focusing on how much of an actual activist he was and how he created his character for boxing, which, by the way... But we, we kind of already know that story, though, don't we? That, that's not, why I'm not, not really... Not archival, they had all the archival footage. They actually went to the trouble of pulling... Not You've watched documentaries... It's a, where they it's do a that. very well-documented man, Lee. Before no, no, we go I, I get that, I get that. But you and I have both seen shitty documentaries, right? Where they have guys pretending to be the fighters. Oh, yeah, no, I hear you, of, yes. This yes. is legit archival footage from the Olympics all the way forward using interviews backlogging on top of... So when he did a TV interview and he talked about growing up and not being able to sit at a counter after winning the Olympics they cut in the archival footage back and forth. It's really well done. I mean, really from, I'm a history buff and I'm also, this is going to make me sound really white. I really like documentaries and I really like good history documentaries done correctly. Right. This one is possibly one of the best structures I've seen using the fighter's own voice as the basic narrative over the top of everything. I enjoyed it. That's it good. even shows the history of where he created the character. I highly recommend it to everybody. Go and uh, watch it when you get a chance. Uh, everybody is still reeling from Harold Letterman. Not only uh, did you post up about Harold Letterman, uh, Jim Lampley posted a piece calling him the biggest boxing fan during the week. Did you meet any normal human beings? Because you're in contact with normal people, Andrew. I'm how far How far did they go with the Muhammad Ali uh, special when they when you say activists like what do you, what do you mean by that what did his they, what did first they... contact with malcolm x how malcolm x got him to the nation of oh, Islam. so an activist for a nation of Islam. Yeah. yeah i mean yes. they covered it in pretty much detail like i knew some of the parts and pieces because i am a fan and i have seen his other movies but this is some pretty fine i feel there, there like really is, there really is two muhammad ali's um, even when he was named, and I don't mean that by two different names. I'm talking about Muhammad Ali. There's two different Muhammad Ali's. He yeah, does, no, this is the first actor. one that actually believed what he was involved in. Yeah, because I there's think another he really one believed in the '60s. Down, put he down black men. He he told Joe Frazier was a uh, brought that, a monkey on up. television. That's the second half. I agree I mean, with. Come on, that's yeah, that's, I'm with that, you. That's on. a that's a total that that's total opposite of activists. You know. <laughs> No, no, um, I completely agree with you. And okay. I think that there's a slight overwhelming tone to it where, and I could be completely wrong. And if you've watched the movie, you can feel free to go onto Facebook and comment about this. I think it kind of depicts how the nation of Islam was kind of using him. Yes. Okay. Yes. And he was okay with it. He really wanted to try to do better rights in that area. And he should. It's something I talk about with my own daughter going how remarkable our times are now. I know everybody still thinks things are bad right now. It's way better than it was. Okay, I was born in 68 and to see stuff in 68 be as fucking insane as it was, you know, hosing people down, you know, stopping, you know, rallies in general, you know, 
the FBI actually profiling Muhammad Ali? I mean, I mean, they crazy. have they have Muhammad Ali on film saying that he was at a KKK meeting and he asked, he said, told everyone he was into segregation. That that you never seen bluebirds sleeping with red uh, red robins. They all stick to their own. That okay? hasn't come up yet. Yeah, yeah that's but on. He does he does make overtures about watering I, down the. I would say in the I would part. say if Muhammad Ali was here today. There would be many other people. Maybe it's just the time that he came out. But if this was, if that was the same things he was doing today, they would say it was a man who just knew how to market himself. He was playing uh, he both did. sides of the he fence. He watched pro wrestling. He yes. pulled, Floyd Mayweather clearly has borrowed heavily from Muhammad Ali and his structure. Deontay Wilder's trying to do it, but he's doing it badly. But I've always talked about this repeatedly on the show to try to point out to everybody that you're creating a story about the fighter, and that's why we watch the fights. We're watching Deontay Wilder not to win. I mean, there are people doing that. There are Deontay Wilder fans. I'm not that naive. But aren't we really watching in the hopes that somebody knocks him out? And that's exactly what Muhammad Ali marketed himself on. He goes, I, it, want, I want people to come see me get knocked out. And it's become that with Deontay. I got to tell you, I thought Deontay was going to save American boxing when he first came. Lee, you have the, the, the audio. It, it, the guy was, a, was a, a dream to a promoter. The height, the power, right? The, the, the body, you could tell he's, he's um, dedicated to his craft, his sport. Um, he just looked like he was everything we wanted, we needed as in a heavyweight. But then he talks. He talks bullshit. He talks all this nonsense all the time. His fighting is ugly as shit. Lee, I'm, I'm totally with you, bro. It's hard to watch. It is it hard really to is. watch because you see so many fucking flaws. It's like, how does he do it? You just you just throw your hands right. in the and air. I would even be forgiving as such because being a Klitschko fan, I think Klitschko is sort of the, of the last couple of decades for me, it's Lennox Lewis and Vladimir Klitschko, right? I came up on Tyson. He turned Bo. down... Hollyfield, like, yeah. let's talk about Klitschko when he was younger. He was a straight up fighter. He looked really awkward, but he never looked like what Deontay Wilder's doing. Like he didn't Could ever look out of control. He did look very stand up ish and very amateurish at the beginning of his career. So did Lennox. The big tall guys often do. Yeah. Yes. Somehow, yes. Deontay's okay with being awkward and all over the place. And on top of that, he throws that weird windmill punching bullshit that leaves himself open, which is why Tyson Fury went back and watched the Luis Ortiz tapes and saw that this guy was open for counter punches. He's, he's wide open for counter punches. Wide open. Yeah, I was, yeah, it was very, it was going to be hard to hit. I, I mean, we said it before the fight. All right. Klitschko had a hard time hitting Tyson Fury. Klitschko, one of the best right hands that division had ever seen. I didn't have a lot of faith that Deontay was going to land that night. He proved me absolutely right. He, fuck, there's four rounds. They gave him one fucking landed punch. Let's talk quickly about her. That, Let that's him almost 10-8. Yes. You guys do understand that, right? When a fighter can make one man four times only land one punch in three minutes, that's borderline 10-8. So you, you run with that scorecard draw all you want. I'll pop in the DVD or what do we say nowadays? I'll download the fight. What, what do we say? It's not even pop in the VCR. I'll stream, I think stream it or drop it. Uh, I think yeah. that's what the kids I'll, say. I'll stream the fight with any of you guys. Uh, maybe we'll do a watch along this week instead uh, of – maybe that's what yeah, we'll do. I think dang. it's on YouTube complete, Andrew. We'll do a watch along and do our own vocal commentary over the top of it and put that out this weekend. Uh, in video format only. There you go. There's there you a teaser. Go. I always say that and still put the audio out, Andrew. I'm weak. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty loyal to the people who listen to the show. Uh, my question is this, Andrew. Did any normal people beyond boxing people actually notice that Harold Letterman died or cared? No, it was very, no, no. Kind of sad, right? He yeah. did have that kind of tremendous impact on the sport, which is why it bothers me. I think if you told the casuals, you know the guy that did the scorecards in between rounds? Oh, him? No! I think yeah. then they would... <laughs> then That's they how he's would, known you know. in my house, because yeah. I worked so long on the... Joining us from heaven right now, Andrew. Oh, shit. Uh, how you doing, Andrew? <laughs> How's it going, Harold? Going pretty good. 115, 113. 
I like his outside movement, but uh, God is really slow at covering up. Andrew? I still not have found Bert Cooper. I'm just saying that for the record. Back to you, Jim. Such a dick. I like recurring. We, we might have to, you know what? We might have to have Harold look for some fighters that have crossed over. Let's see how many did make it to Heavenly. We'll talk, we'll, we'll discuss this. That's a good one. That is a good one. Edwin <laughs> I, Valero I, was I'm hanging. I'm going to go way out on a limb, Andrew, <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure that Harold Letterman's going to be in the middle of a gunfight in the next couple of weeks. I'm, I don't know. I can't make Are a lot you? of predictions. But somehow I feel that he's going to be in heaven and there's going to be a gunfight that breaks out in heaven. Uh, Alexis uh, Agrero crossed over. Come. Arturo Gotti has crossed over. There, there's been and you some think those people are in heaven? I don't know. And that's why we need to talk to Harold. You, you know, there, there's something there, Lee, but go ahead. Well, we'll, Gervonta what am I looking at? You're the one who posted the Gervonta Davis uh, gets you, beat you guys... by girlfriend on Instagram. Yeah, he's on an Instagram live and she starts whooping his ass. And then she says, look at that dumb. Yeah, wow. motherfucker. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got to start this one from the beginning. <laughs> it suddenly got really good really fast. All right. I got the audio up on this. I can't wait already. Andrew, bring. I'll fucking film you on this live. For real. Give this fucking phone. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll fucking film you on this live. For real. Stop motherfucking playing with me on this fucking Instagram shit. Look at him over there looking stupid, stupid motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know if he can not, not be a stupid yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> I have been saying it for quite some time on this show that Gervonta Davis does look and behave like a stupid motherfucker, Andrew. <laughs> She and now the woman that actually she sucks his dick is confirming my biggest suspicions that Gervonta Davis is a stupid motherfucker. <laughs> How bad is your life when the chick who has sex with you is calling you a stupid motherfucker and then releases the video? On Instagram Live. <laughs> By the and way, look like she threw boy, a did chair. that get a lot of social engagement. Kudos oh. to the FNR regulars. Our crowd, Andrew. I love our crowd. <laughs> Look at what they do. They care about. Let's let's just go back through the last three. Do they care about Harold Letterman? A little bit. They're boxing fans. Yante Wilder. A little bit. That's fine. ESPN talks ongoing with Match Room, huh? For mandatory fights. A little bit. They're involved. Javonta Davis. <laughs> Look, yeah. Give us more of the Javonta Davis shit. I hear you. Fight Net Radio fans, I hear you, and I post this kind of content. <laughs> Kudos to Andrew for finding it before me. I would have downloaded the video and made it into a masterpiece that looped itself, for God's sakes. Want more proof that this is all our fans are interested in, Andrew? Let's see what they thought about the Williams Herd fight peaking at 2 million views. Yeah, Back a little the, bit. Back to the what do they care about? <laughs> Kidding, bitch slap. Called a fucking dick. I love that shit. Fucking, I love fighting at radio fans. Kudos to you guys. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, Williams Heard did 2.1 million views on Fox Primetime regular TV, Andrew. Are you surprised by the number? No. Uh, yes, actually, I was surprised. It's a big number. PVC hasn't been putting out a 2.1 number here recently, so that's good for Williams. Hopefully, Al Heyman can get him back in the ring, either with Heard or someone else, and follow up on this these numbers. One thing terrible about the PBC is we see these numbers sometimes every once in a while. They come out heavy. Then the guy disappears for eight months, a year, you know, a year and a half. It's a, it's um insane, really. I mean, shit, to give you a good example with Spence, he did six million views one time. And then he leaves us, leaves for over a year, doesn't fight again. So it's uh, th this happens a lot. We'll see 2.1, like it. Uh, Williams fight, liked it. Listen. Didn't give that guy, that man enough credit after the fight um, when he was saying how people were dogging him out, saying that he was going to lose. I, I was one of those, too. Uh, I think I paid attention a little too much to the Charlo tape. Um, didn't give him much of a shot with Hurd. Hurd had been on a great three-fight streak. Three out of four fights were against top contenders in the junior middleweight division. 
thought Hurd was going to take care of business. Uh, I think Hurd was watching the Charlo tape a little too much leading up to that fight, too, and took him a little lightly. Hopefully they get the rematch on quick. Go ahead, Lee. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Lovett. Yes, who's this? Bob. Oh. Um, do you hate the whitey? No. Then why would you post this article? Oh, jeez. Because it did 2.1. That's a good number. Well, ESPN. Closer. What? Who what am I looking at? the article? Who wrote the article? Oh, fuckboxingscene.com. <laughs> and why fuckboxingscene.com, Andrew? Because they're owned by the PBC. That's right. So you hate the whitey. <laughs> Say it. No. No, 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 I don't. No, I don't. Safe move. I don't want anybody to pull the ladder up from underneath you. Um, <laughs> Garcia versus Garcia. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Of I've actually got... You want to just cover it this way? I don't even know if they deserve to have their own video highlights being shown while we talk about the fight. Uh, I guess it's official. Uh, based on the articles that I'm looking at on the topic, Andrew, they're still in the works. So it's clearly as of yesterday in the discussion phase uh, let's just cover it right now. I won't put any video highlights up. So here's what they're talking about, Andrew. Mikey versus Danny. Uh, Fox pay-per-view. August pay-per-view. I know. I know. Pay-per-view, question mark? What has demonstrated that Mikey should be on pay-per-view ever again? Like, did they not learn their lesson? On Fox pay-per-view August 31st from Staples Center in Los Angeles, Spence Garcia did solid numbers in March. Uh, they did, oh wait, they released numbers, Andrew. Do you know what Spence Garcia did in March? They said 360, upwards 360, of 360. Andrew, yes. and they call it a solid number. Is 360 they a solid number? Yes, you're look, you're around thirty something million dollars as long as both fighters were signed, you know, at a good price, maybe what ten million, five million a piece, four, six, something like that. Yeah, they made out twenty million. They split that with uh. the the PBC, and they they did okay. Um, this is their first pay pay per view too, so you you got to think that's a solid number. What I don't understand is why Spence Porter is on free television. And the guys that lost to the guys that are fighting on free television are on pay per view. Danny Garcia, Garcia, Garcia lost the Porter. Danny Garcia LA lost better than Garcia versus the Garcia. And maybe we could get a Garcia as the referee. Then we'd have Garcia, Garcia with a Garcia refereeing. And I think we actually have a couple of California judges named Garcia. How many Garcias can we put in the ring on August 31st, Andrew? That's my question. Let's go with the bigger news. Garcia versus Garcia with Garcia as the referee. Judges for the fight ringside will be Garcia, Garcia, and Garcia. You, you don't think, you don't think, hey, hold on. You don't think. And I'll go to the fight. Wait, let me get one more in. And I'll take my coach with me to the fight. So I'll go watch the fight with Sammy Garcia while Garcia fights Garcia with Garcia as the referee with Garcia, Garcia, Garcia judging. It'll be a Garcia night. Okay, go ahead. Spence and Porter got to be a little shafted here. I, I'm hoping they're making serious money. They're they're guaranteed some serious money because these guys, the two losers, are fighting each other on pay per view. Re think about that. Spence just beat Garcia, and Sean Porter. I'm gonna say Sean Porter's last fight is a win over Danny Garcia. And no, he he beat Ugas and then Dark Garcia. So he has two wins, but. That's not the point. How the fuck <laughs> did Spence Porter end up on free television and the two losers get pay-per-view? And don't tell me it's because Garcia is big with the Puerto Rican fan base. He's not. We all know that. They're, they are literally. You know what, Andrew? L.A. Fight. is just filthy with Puerto Ricans. This no, is the number no, one Puerto no, Rican no. hotbed. No, because they're they're thinking pay-per-view in New York would do good, right? And the East Coast would do well, good, but I don't think it is. At least where the fucking Puerto Ricans are. If you're going to go with a Puerto Rican crowd, do it in his hometown, do it in Philadelphia, do it in New York where there are actual Puerto Ricans. Yeah, I don't yeah. know any Puerto Ricans in L.A., I swear to God. No, this is not about Danny Garcia. This is about Mikey in L.A. They're going off of Mike. Mikey's the sale, the sale of Mikey's this whole ticket. The, I, 
Again, I don't get the Mikey. He's from Oxnard, bro. He's from I get that. That's not L.A. That's and, not L.A. Uh, come on, Lee. Listen, the boxing world. It's closer world, to you than it is to L.A., Andrew. That's the, what Oxnard is. In the is. boxing world, world, though, down the southern, all of the Mexicans in California and Texas, they, they know this guy being from Southern California. He's a good fighter. He, he was undefeated. He's a three-division champ. They're hoping he sell. he's the wholesale for this fight card. Seriously. He's got to sell out the arena. It's not fucking Danny. Danny has two losses, and he has two wins that everybody in the boxing world knows he doesn't deserve. So Danny Garcia is really a four-time loser, all right? He, this is a guy who had to rematch a 40-year-old Eric Morales because the first fight was too close. The Mexicans know who Danny Garcia is. The Puerto Ricans know who Danny Garcia is. This isn't about Danny. Now, look, I, I, I got to say I like it's an interesting matchup. Okay, that's about all it is. But because I was going to accept Terrence Crawford, Danny Garcia, I got to accept Mikey versus Danny. Um, I don't know where the winner goes in this fight because seriously, Danny's lost to Thurman. He's lost to Porter. I don't, you know, I don't have no interest in seeing him fight Spence. I really don't. Um, Garcia already fought Spence. So I don't know where these guys are going. After this fight, uh, uh, you know, another pay-per-view showdown, I guess. But, but um, yeah, I would wa I would watch. But uh, if there's something that Christina says we have to go to, definitely not telling her. Not going to start an argument to stay home for this fight. I'm just not. He, you got to remember, Danny Garcia has lost two of his last three fights. His last, his, what are his, Brandon Rios? <laughs> that's a fucking joke. Brandon Rios. And Adrian Granados are the two victories Danny has uh, surrounding his two losses to the elites, Sean Porter and Keith Thurman. Um, he's not he's not pay per view worthy at all. I, I have I I know a lot of people think Danny's power is going to stop Mikey Garcia. I think Mikey Garcia's boxing skills are a little bit better than that. From he's going to move from one left hook all night, and and he'll outbox him for a twelve round decision especially in Southern California. Overs and unders at 100,000 buys. Oh, they'll get over that, but it won't do three. It won't even come near 300. It, well, I don't, I don't see that at all. The, the, Puerto, the Puerto Ricans never bought into Danny Garcia. Danny was fake. He lost early in his career. He tried speaking that Spanish on the, the Herrera fight. And it totally oh, Spanglish, backfired. Andrew. Get it right. He yeah, he Spanglish. didn't even do, he didn't even do Spanglish though. Remember, he was just dropping like words. Like it was really bad. It, it's almost like they had a plan to to have him speak Spanish, and then Danny just lost the confidence and starts talking English. Throws in a a K and a C every once in a while, and no one fucking bought into it. And that was the end of Danny Garcia. Really, I am dead serious. He turned into this Philadelphia. I'm a you know hard guy. Wearing jewelry and shit. He he left all that. You know, I'm fighting for the Puerto Rican island. He left all that alone. He literally looks like he should be in in sync when he wears street clothes. <laughs> and, and his uh, father was actually born there. It, it's uh, whatever. Yeah, I have nothing on the fight. I guess this video doesn't need any help at all. But I saw it come across one of my feeds and had to post it up. And it's yeah, up. it's just worthwhile. Go and watch it. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. has joined Twitter. I can only assume, Andrew, because I'm going to go follow it right now. Do you think it will be positive or negative when I go on there? Like, do you, how many, let's, let's bet, because I'm sure you haven't gone on it yet. How many followers do you think are following Team Chavez Jr. on Twitter right now on his brand new Twitter account? I have no idea. All right, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb. First of all, I don't think he's verified. He won't be verified officially. He might be. And secondly, I don't think he'll have more than 5,000 followers. Would that be insulting at this point since yesterday? And I'm imagining you posted this because it's a brand new Twitter account. No, right? oh, if you play the video, I'll show you why I posted it. It's fucking oh, okay. hilarious. Come oh, on, it's, it's a video. I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought he had a new a Twitter return. account. All right, let's see what it is. It's the return, Lee. Oh, I, I thought you finally got a Twitter account. All right, here we go. JC is the return. Oh, 
Uh, I'm not doing this justice. Go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> JC. He's coming. Wearing cowboy boots on a football field. Look, look, I'm running. I'm running, people. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so whoa, taking whoa, Hold on, hold on. How, how are we letting this one go? Can you run faster than this? Because I think I can. I think I can, yes. <laughs> oh, look, look, look. oh, my God. I got to go back to it again because it's so great. Hurry, hurry, <laughs> hurry. That's his party. Okay, I'm getting tired. Getting just tired. Play. Just let it play. Look at his look at his hand movement. Look at the speed. Tired. <sighs> I guarantee he's getting tired, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this video is so bad it's shocking. His dad is just shaking his fucking head somewhere, Lee. I'm telling you. Uh, look at this shit. What was that? What the return? Logo. The return. I this is that literally, the, this is right up there with Dante and the fucking Frisbees, bro. Hey, seriously, everyone should make videos like this and just flood Chavez's uh, account. I can make this video, Lee. Hold on, I, I, hold on. Let's see. <laughs> I can't wait, right? Oh I can't God. wait for the comments on this video. I cannot wait to see what the fans say. Boxing fans, please don't fail me or I will never be happy for the rest of my life. Is this the best practice footage you guys could have gotten? Kudos right off the top. Kudos. Somebody nailed it. Uh, fucking hell, I'd say I'm faster. I agree with you, Adam Kenny. I don't know you, but you <laughs> probably are. Uh, someone needs to lay off the weed before training. Oh, boxing fans, you're my favorite. Where does this rank in your worst promotional videos? Agreed. No, it's Cut so on an true. iPhone. No, that's not fair to an iPhone. I think you could shoot a better video on an iPhone. He has to have been laughing, maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to read the ones in Spanish because it's just embarrassing to hear me speak Spanish. This was a joke of a video, right? I don't think so, Wesley. No. Uh, let me respond for you. I don't think so. He's back. He's returning. <laughs> <laughs> and that one says it all by itself. <laughs> Good meme. Good meme. Not just a good meme. That's a nailed it meme. Let's see. What else? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Bright side. This may be the first boxing promo video ever where no one doubts the authenticity of the moves. I agree. That's 100% Chavez Jr., Andrew. Wouldn't you agree? We get the next one. <laughs> wow, the athleticism and the drive. He's tired making the video. I love uh, his smart yard dash. I'm not even being a smart ass right now, but I think your dad can still take you out right now. <laughs> you know he can. Have you ever? Oh, you. Hey, his dad, like, I don't know, two months ago, released a video of him hitting a heavy bag. Yes, he can. Yes, he can, Lee. Uh, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, I'm with this one. The fuck? Let's just That's let this from... one sink in for a split second. Yep, I agree with the Snoop meme. Let's see, what else? Slow as molasses, hombre. Agreed. Show more replies, of course. Might be... Oh, you guys actually uh... removed tweets. That's all. Like, in one day, that's... How many people follow this dipshit? Like, what has he got, a thousand followers? He's only um, got a thousand following, Andrew. No, he's got two hundred and twenty-eight. Yeah. But only. And that's still yeah, he's, sad. he's got a quarter of a million followers. That's still. Boy, sad, they let him though. off the hook. He deleted bad comment, worst comments. I can't imagine what was worse than all of that, Andrew. Where they actually disgrace to your father. Your father loves Canelo oh, more. So your good. dad's. Your dad uh, said Canelo was his son. <laughs> the son he never so had. So great. So great. So great, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> uh, I think there's another one. This if is horrible. Down... This this is horrible, but I'm gonna go download that video. Go down go down some. I'm gonna more. download the video and then re-upload the video because it might possibly be the greatest thing that I've ever seen. 
Uh, this one you posted. This is the wild monkey attack. <laughs> this monkey got issues, man. Fucking Andrew. Like, I'm trying to put things up that are remotely boxing related. Andrew's just full on. It's a monkey video. What are you shitting me? This is awesome. Watch the last one, though. Why does he do this to the old man? It's either old man or old lady. Oh, this guy, he flips him off. Look. He challenges him. Monkey whoops his ass, eh? Fuck you, monkey. Wow. wow. <laughs> don't fuck with a monkey. Everybody knows don't fuck with a monkey. I wouldn't know. Oh, watch this one. You can tell he's old. Don't do it. Oh. oh. Face plan of the old dude. <laughs> By the way, how did that one do? That's our highest view and highest engagement that we put up on the page in the past week. FightNet radio fans are the best. The best! Do they care about Michael Conlon? No! They care about monkeys putting people up. Go to FightNet radio on Facebook and look at monkey videos that have nothing to do with boxing. If you want to talk about Conlon, go to a boxing website. <laughs> Clearly, our fans don't give two shits about Conlon fighting his rematch. This is a great rematch, by the way. If you look at it on the surface, Andrew, Conlon's going to fight the dude that he got fucked over by in the Olympics, Vladimir Nikitin. Yes, yes. I'm all a about this a fight. Hey, Lee. Conlon's going to fuck him up. Do you think Deontay is going to try to do that? You know, the bronze bomber. He might want to start calling the, guy, the guy's the animal. Monkey. No, bronze I monkey. I think you're onto something. And he walks to the ring with a monkey who knocks out people for him. <sighs> Look at this one. Oh, put the sound up. Put the sound up. Look at this man ripping punches. <laughs> Time! Hey, you hear how his noises are faster than his hands? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so fast. Look how fast I am. Invisible sit up. <laughs> he's the best. He is. No, he's, he's a fucking joke. He's the best. By the way, <laughs> shout out to FightNet Radio fans who jumped right on this one too. Couldn't lay off. I just love Ooh, the ah. noise. Ooh, ah, yeah. ah. It's like, let, hey, me tell you, let me tell you how good this one is, Andrew. This is going to make the beginning clip to the show. This is literally, I'm going to pull the audio, and it's going to be one of the uh, channel changes to a Chavez Jr. <laughs> we might have a new game. Are they having sex, or is it Chavez Jr. training for his comeback game? Is this how- sex? Or is it Chavez Jr. getting ready for a comeback? I would, oh I would love God. to count how many punches were actually thrown to how many grunts were set, came out of wait, his hold mouth. Hold on. Let me tr- wait, I'm into this game, Andrew. Let, let's see if you can tell the difference, all right? Uh, I'm sure I can do this with YouTube. It won't be... Uh, I need a soundboard of sex. I'm sure that's on YouTube, <laughs> right? Sound effect people having sex. All right, let's see what I get. Loud neighbors having sex. All right, you ready, Andrew? Nice. This is on YouTube, so it's going to be G-rated. This video, me being a... Yeah, I understand. Proceed. Get it over with. (laughs) So is this Chavez Jr. training? Or people having sex. <laughs> He's the best. He's the best. He's the best. Uh, oh, here's this big fucking announcement. I got a I got t-shirt. a t-shirt. I got a Till t-shirt. This day, no. I got a t-shirt. I got, I got, I got a t-shirt. Atal. And I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say Kelly King is the entire engagement on this post. Shout out to Kelly King, one of the regulars. And Chavez uh, Jr. is more popular than the undefeated heavyweight champ. This was a video that I posted uh, on Monday. I recommend going back. This Good. is a uh, Fight Net Radio presents greatest knockouts non-boxer. See, at least I'm making an attempt, Andrew, to making it somewhat boxing related. Oh, fucking awesome! By the way, Fight Net Radio fans, don't disappoint again, Andrew. 
They know what they like. Oh, Ridiculous people getting face planted. <laughs> you can tell biggest... by the numbers. Yep, it's the biggest wait, one. Wait for it. No. Yes. What does he do? Come on, dude. Yeah! <laughs> That's the money shot, Andrew. Real show about boxing and a tribute to Harold Letterman. <laughs> no engagement, Andrew. <laughs> Fucking crazy ass people falling off of shit. Big engagement, Andrew. <laughs> Blat! Oh, that hurt me. <laughs> tribute to Harold Letterman. No engagement. People getting jacked up. High engagement. <laughs> What's that tell us about boxing fans, Andrew? What's that tell us about boxing fans? Ay, ay, ay. That means that people watch... Oh! Oh, damn! Yeah. And again, I'll say it. Engagements? Nobody cares about real boxing. Wah, wah. Not even shared one time the tribute to Harold Letterman. That's sad. Never, those never are, Andrew. They just That's never sad. are. When I cut them up, they do a lot better. When they're full pieces, they're not as popular. That does it for what's on our Facebook page for this week. Last but not least, still in negotiation, Andrew. Um, and not on our page for some reason. I don't know why one of us didn't pick up on this story. It would be uh, the story of Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Tyson Fury has told the WBC he will take on Dillian White if they agree to make the fight for the diamond belt. He wants that diamond belt, Andrew. Rather than yeah, the interim strap. I don't, I don't know what's behind it. Is it because he wants to sell it? What's what's up with the diamond belt? What, Probably to sell it. Why not? I think he yeah, just wants it to piss off. I guarantee this is just to piss off Deontay Wilder. He wants one of their fake-ass belts for his fight just to fuck with Deontay Wilder. Oh yeah. I think he honestly <laughs> believes he can beat Billy and White without even trying. And he wants one of those fake WBC belts. And I propose that... Here's his exact quote. I propose that we make me and Dillian White for the WBC diamond belt and not the interim belt. Fury said in an Instagram video. Uh, I'll take care of Dillian White and knock him out within six rounds. I accept the challenge. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd fight Dillian White any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Make it for the diamond belt, not the interim version, and you guys got a deal. Let's get it on. White was quick to respond to Fury's demand after hit hitting... Uh, hitting out at the WBC's plan last week and said, let's do it then, Tyson Fury. I'd like to fight you anytime, anywhere, seven days a week and five times on Sunday. I look forward to putting you to sleep. Let's go, baby. You know what? In September, in September 2009, the WBC created its new Diamond Championship belt. This belt was created as an honorary championship exclusively to award the winner of a historic fight between two high-profile and elite boxers. The title can also be vacated in case of a fighter's long-term absence or retirement from boxing. What, so once again, the I question here is, does Eddie Hearn or Bob Arum have enough stroke to buy the diamond belt for this fight? Because that's uh, well, all it comes it, down I to. Think, I, I believe I, Suleiman already said he would... Um, give them the title, the WB, the diamond, whatever the fuck. I still don't really know what this belt, why he's demanding this belt. Um, I guess it's prettier, right? It has little diamonds on it, but the belt seems to do nothing. It's it just created uh, to and an award between two an historic fight. I'm sorry, Fury versus Dillian White is not a historic fight. It's um, not. I'm it's telling not. you, this is just to piss off Deontay Wilder. Andrew. I, I guess. I, I guess I, I don't know. What he, I don't know. I don't it's even. Just I don't to get under the skin of Deontay. I don't even want Dillian White unless Dillian White is making ten million the night he fights Tyson Fury. I don't think Dillian White should take the fight. I know he already agreed to that he would, but I wouldn't. I, I would want to fight the fucking champ. I mean, the guy's waited enough, uh, long enough. Very sad. I and then you know, Eddie Hearn's power. I don't really see him doing shit for Dillian White. I haven't heard no, anything Dillian White from got him. the Look, and I'm with even Tyson Fury on this. The person who got the shaft in this whole transaction, in Tyson Fury's own words, were Dillian White got fucked. I mean, yes. basically, he's the only one in the top 10 who's really getting the shaft in any of these fights. 
Yep. And that's because he's in the WBC. He's going after the WBC, and, wants to be ranked by the WBC, and he's getting fucked straight and you up. Got, you have the WBC champ literally saying, it, we have the video on our Facebook page, uh, these mandatories are like flies, and you need to be a fly swatter and swat them away. Dude, he's not fighting his mandatory. Why isn't anyone broken a story about this? I, I don't get it. it the man is ranked number 12 or 11 in the WBC. He is not a mandatory. Okay, so let's see how many of these Deontay Wilder has actually fought, Andrew. Uh, he hasn't fought Dillian White yet. Uh, he hasn't fought Don, uh, Brazil. That's next. There's Kaunaki, Parker, Pavetkin, Pulev. He's already taken, he's got Fury and Ortiz. We we understand that. But there's a lot of names on that list, Andrew. A lot of names. So well, is and, his... And, and that doesn't that even game? matter. We don't need him to fight all those names. He's supposed to fight his number one, and that's Dillian White. It's not Brazil. Brazil, Brazil, whatever the fuck his name is. How do you say his name? Brazil, right? Brazil? Brazil. Yeah. Oh, I hope to remember it after Saturday. Dead serious. I really do. Dillian White is considered the number one contender. Fury's considered the number two contender. That's how they have it marked. Yeah, so, so why so why is show. uh so why are we watching? Why is Brazil on... at number four and Adam Kalnaki at number five? And you got the ones the they're considering board. for the I'm next fighting fights? my mandatory. I'm fighting my mandatory. You're not fighting your mandatory. <laughs> the, the number fourth guy is not your mandatory. I agree. Oh, maybe it's because he's the brown bomber. Hey, I He believe. fights number three. Yes, he's number three. That would be Luis Ortiz, Ortiz again. And he's already said he'd fight Luis wow. Ortiz again. Wow. That's it. He's number three. So, yeah, number four makes sense to Deontay. Ah, I did not see. Three you plus just gotta, You got to think like Deontay to know what he's doing. I get it now. Third so here's the killer. here are the proposed upcoming fights for Deontay Wilder for all you Deontay Wilder fans. Monster upcoming fights. Uh, Dillian White, Tyson Fury. Uh, Fury, of course, would be a rematch, and if you live under a rock, Ortiz in a rematch. Uh, Brazil is on Saturday. He's already said he wants Adam Kaunaki. Sure, why not? He moves like an egg with legs. Uh, Parker, who's literally. His two losses are to people in the top 10, so why not take a shot at Parker? Uh, Pavekin, whose two losses are to people in the top 10, sure, why not? Pulev, no, he already ran. Remember, uh, Pulev, Pavekin already made millions of dollars off Wilder. That's yeah, that's sure. the and that's another thing you PBC fans seem to forgot, too. Pavekin won his steroids case in court and took the money out of escrow and walked away. He already has a win against Wilder, too. My bad. Pulev. Kubrat. Um, if he can collectively get his shit together in his sex tape scandal. Uh, n at number nine is Kay Bale, who's 19-0. and 0, uh, Probably in Bob's camp. It looks like he's from Germany, so he's probably got a green card and living out in Oxnard. Uh, Rivas at number 10, who's 26-0. and 0. Chisora at 11, who's 30 and 9. Yeah, and then you look at this shit at the bottom of the list, right? Takam, Yoka, Joyce. Like, the WBC top 10 is horrible. He can live forever in the WBC heavyweight title all he you're, wants. You're, you're, you ready for this? Mm. On April 20th, 2018. U.S. boxer Wilder loses $4.3 million to Povetkin in court case. New York. Fuck out of here. He already lost that fight. He has a fight where he, oh, he's dirty. I got he's nice everywhere. He's dirty. I'm out of here. And then they lose in court. Guy gets $4 million for not even throwing a punch, people. By the way, for everybody who's into Yusk like I am, Yusk is ranked number two by the WBA already, Andrew. Nope. Feel bad for a... Uh, <laughs> feel really bad, right? 
Uh, here's my problem with the WBA. What's the difference between Joshua and their super and their world heavyweight champion and their super world heavyweight champion? Are those things that I'm just yeah. unaware of on how that works? Isn't there just one champion? Because there's only one champion in the WBO, the IBF. WBA has got a weird thing. WBC doesn't have anything weird other than they just want to fuck Dillian White because he doesn't work for the right promoter. And actually, he does. I, I don't know what's going on there. It's very sad. I don't. Dillian White needs to be a little bit more vocal, though. I wouldn't be laying down like this. So, what do you think about the fight, Andrew? What fight? What? Are we, which one are we talking about? Tyson Fury, Dillian White. Oh, I, I don't think he gets made. Okay, that'll do it for this week's show. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. <laughs> That's funny. Go to fightnetradio.com, follow us on all forms of the social medias, and check out our memes, videos, <coughs> excuse me, memes, videos, audio, everything that we post. Uh, we like to be socially interactive. If you want to find Andrew and I throughout the week, let's go to Facebook, uh, go to Fight Net Radio, click on the Facebook link. That's where we post everything. Everything, everything is on Facebook, by and large. We do have a YouTube channel. Uh, we have a direct link to our Facebook video page as well. We are on Instagram. We're on everything. And there are multiple forums on which you can listen to us. And here's a quick plug. Go to our merch store and buy the basic bitch. Let's see if I can get it up on the screen in a timely manner. We have several models for you to choose from. And coming soon, I'm number three is going to be made. I just haven't figured out how it's going to be done yet. But you can pick up uh, what we call the basic bitch. Fight Net Radio shirt. It's only $17.50 U.S., and it's made from the highest quality. It's a premium tea. I don't really know what that means other than it's not a shitty tea, so it shouldn't look like a big tube on your body, based on the way they're describing it, Andrew. We have it in three different designs. It's the tank top, the wrestler, and the basic black tea. Pick one up today at fightnetradio.com. Anything you'd like to add, Andrew? See you guys Friday after the weigh-ins. I expect something to happen big. I think these two will exchange this or their team will. So expect something to happen on Friday. See you guys. Friday! FightNetRadio.com Fight now!